As if to make my point for me, Tesla has opened flat this morning. It has been up and down around the zero, up, you know, 50 cents, down 50 cents. Um, even Barron's reported as a headline that the Tesla stock is oddly flat this week. And uh, it's not uh, changing much, but we also have bond yields uh, uh, that are down this morning and oil falling as well. Gold is soaring and equities are hitting all-time highs. Um, in the POTUS compilation, you know, the president of the United States, in the presidential race, Trump is increasing his lead in the battleground states poll in the polling uh, numbers. And also he's gaining in the betting site odds as well. So for those of you who are interested in how the presidential competition is going. There you go. That's an update there. Um, Tesla is back to offering full self-driving test rides again. So with a lot of confidence in the new 12.5.6, um, very exciting to see that they're going to offer test rides again. Be uh, so interesting if they would give us some information next week at the earnings call with regard to how many people are actually getting subscriptions and are buying the full self-driving as a result of all these test uh, opportunities they've been giving. Sawyer Merritt says this morning that Tesla has officially stopped selling the Foundation Series. Um, and uh, that there's a lot of conversation out there about what this actually means for folks. Um, you know, does this mean that, oh, you know, the... the uh, um, the demand is dried up, and so Tesla no longer is going to sell the Foundation Series, or uh, you know, the, the, it's over now for the uh, for the Cybertruck. Well, no, that isn't what it means. What it means is is that they there's plenty of the folks who surprisingly were buying the one hundred twenty thousand hundred thousand dollar version. That part of the market is saturated right now. Now they're offering the seventy eight nine thousand dollar version. And they've offered that not just to people in the reservation list, but they're also offering it to the public um, ahead of dropping the price again or dropping the available price, the version price, if you will. Uh, once again, probably my guess would be maybe sometime next year. We'll see what happens over the next few months, how long the $79,000 version is a big seller uh, as they go through the list. Um, we had a uh, an effort this morning by Bradford Ferguson, who asked the question, uh, if I can find it here, I wrote it, I put it down. <laughs> okay, let's see. Yes, he said, do you have, a, he put a poll out, he says, do you have a Cybertruck reservation? And, uh, and how many of you bought the foundation? 14.8% who had a reservation bought already. Buying the non-foundation, there was people waiting to buy the non-foundation, 10.2%. Waiting for more price cuts. Oh, 61.2%. So if we had 2 million, that would mean there's a million 200,000 of the folks that are still waiting. And then he said, and then his, his fourth option was canceling. 13.8% have say they're canceling. If that tur turns out to be true, you'd be looking at a couple of hundred thousand, maybe tops that are canceling while, because they're they're tired of waiting or for whatever reason. Uh, okay, let's see. We also have this this morning. The um, news actually in general this morning has turned sour. This has been really good for Tesla all week, but today lots and lots of headlines talking about a failed 1010 event and about the new NISTA investigation into four accidents involving low, vis vis <laughs> low visibility and low and uh, low visibility. We'll talk about that in a second. And then about the earnings. So let's take a look um at some of this the good news bad news investors seem to like that 220 dollar price tag right now on tesla stock nobody's piling into this bargain price but nobody's bailing out either so the big question for the short term becomes what will happen next week if there is a big miss but as i've been trying to look around in terms of the articles about what is expected next week it's really hard to know what the number is to beat. The highest number I've seen was 66 cents. Zaxx is coming in at 58. Investopedia is saying that the street is now at 51 cents. And that's similar to AJ's 50 cents. So what happened to the 66 cent if we're really at 51 cent? I think we can beat the 51 cent, but I'm not sure we can beat the 66 cent. 
So the article in Investopedia goes on to say analysts are somewhat split on Tesla stock with 19 analysts tracked by visible alpha holding, visible alpha having a buy rating, seven a hold and three sell. Their average target price is 223. Okay, well, that's certainly where we are right now. Wedbush Securities Analyst said that following the deliveries report, surpassing estimates was a step in the right direction, but they acknowledged that they and the broader market were hoping Tesla would beat projections by a wider margin. Wedbush said that after the delivery date and the robotaxi event, that they are retaining their outperform rating and a $300 price target and would be buyers of any weakness in Tesla stock. Cybertruck in the U.S. Uh, pair, uh, anyone in the general public can now order the 79. I told you that just a minute ago, 70,990. So the general public is invited to buy. Now, my expectation on that is if you're the general public and you want to buy a 79,990, you would put in, you would go in and we, you would put in your order, you would spec it out, and then they would tell you when it's going to become available. And my guess right now is that that availability, I didn't do any checking on this, but that availability would be months into the future unless you have a reservation. That is my speculation. I'm interested to hear what you think or what you've seen. Uh, and I'm really, really studying every piece of news that I can for how this next step will work. But that's how it works with regard to the foundation series. I'm expecting that's how it's going to work on the next set here. CNBC says this morning, Tesla faces a new investigation by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, concerning issues with its full self-driving systems and whether they are safe to use in fog, glaring sun, or other reduced roadway visibility condition. The probe files an incident in which a Tesla driver who had been using FSD struck and killed a pedestrian. And other FSD-involved collisions, I think there were three other ones, according to other reporting. Records posted to the NISTA website on Friday morning said the purpose of the new probe would be to assess the ability of FSD's engineering controls to detect and respond appropriately to reduced roadway visibility conditions, whether any other similar FSD crashes have occurred in reduced roadway visibility conditions, and if so, the contributing circumstances. The agency will also look into Tesla's over-the-air software updates to its uh, FSD systems, which are now marketed as full self-driving supervised, to understand the timing, purpose, and capabilities of any such updates, as well as Tesla's assessment of the safety impact. So let me just say something. Uh, maybe you're already thinking this in your in your head anyway. Um, there's eight cameras. Uh, those eight cameras are going to have different responses to uh, too much sun, to fog, to uh, sand. Um, I've been through, have you been, been to a sandstorm? Yeah, I've been through a couple, not good. Um, yeah, and it's reduced visibility for all these different kinds of reasons. My guess is going to be that, that the full self-driving system with all those cameras is going to do at least as well as I am in that situation. Probably better because it has more eyeballs. So if the sun is glaring here, it's not glaring as much over here. Whereas for me, my eyes are only this far apart. And I know you have definitely been in a sun glare situation where you were probably nervous. I know I've also been in ground fog, all kinds of fog. I, I was in fog so bad one time and I needed to find a way to get to a place to stop that I opened my door and was watching the curb. That's the only thing I could see was the curb in order to ma manage my car to find a place to stop. So, you know, there's situations like that and I'm guessing that uh, FSD will handle it at least as well as I could. Probably wouldn't open the door and look at the curb. Um, this is from AJ this morning. Tesla will receive by next month Indonesia's first reports to the United States of nickel-based material used to make electric vehicle batteries, and said Energy Minister Balil Lahadalia today. Previously, Indonesia has reported exporting EV battery precursors to China only. The limiting factor says Tesla is redirecting battery supply chains to the United States. This is important. China has a monopoly on refining battery materials like lithium and nickel. Tesla has a break. It has to break that monopoly if they want to be the masters of their own destiny. When it comes to China, it's all about leverage. So here we go, the beginning of those imported products into the United States to be refined in the United States and used in the United States. 
Uh, Business Insider says, I don't know how much of the uh, RoboTaxi event was teleoperated or not, but I have to say, even if, it's, if it is teleoperated, a t teleoperating a robot with that kind of control requires real sophistications, sophisticated, I'm sorry, sophisticated AI. This is according to Rev Lebra Lebradian, Vice President of Omniverse and Simulation, where? Oh, at NVIDIA, he told Business Insider. Labradarian has worked for NVIDIA for 23 years, leads the company's Omniverse platform, which is simulation software created so that robots can practice reasoning and take actions without causing damage. Robotics in, in, is NVIDIA's next $0 billion market. Zero billion dollar market. And the company is all in, Libertarian explained. He acknowledged that all builders in the space have some skepticism to overcome. He says people should be skeptical. <laughs> skeptical. That's natural with any new technology, he said, but there's a real technological achievement in Tesla's uh, presentation so far. Mapping your controls to the robot, acting in the real world, and interacting with others around, that is a huge Huge, he says it twice, advancement, and it's not something that should be downplayed. Seeing robots interact with humans as freely as the coverage of the event showed is an amazing achievement, even with some level of remote controlling, and that shouldn't be demeaned, according to the NVIDIA executive. Both Mux and NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang are focused on humanoid robots as increasingly Advanced machine learning offers an unlocking technology for robotics. Musk said at least at last week's event that Optimus will be the biggest product ever of any kind. Wang often says that humanoid form factor will eventually allow for the widest adoption since they could one day function in any environment meant for humans. Labradarian told BI, B, BI that the humanoid format could also help with the challenge of data collection. Replications of human movement are more readily available than the data needed to train robots in entirely new forms. To train Optimus, Tesla pays dozens of employees up to $48 an hour to perform tasks in motion capture suits. Musk has claimed that two Optimus robots, robots are performing autonomously on Tesla's factory floor. We saw this yesterday in the video. In July, Musk said Tesla would produce a small amount of genuinely useful humanoid robots etc. Okay, I think we've done that one. Um, the final statement here was, if you can teleoperate a robot to behave like that, then you can also imagine once you have a brain that's autonomous, it can replace the human who's doing those same things, according to Labradarian. Labra, Labradarian. The robot's actual capable, actually capable of doing all those amazing things, whether it's a human in the loop or only AI. I think it is remarkable, he says. <laughs> this is Randy Kirk trying to speak this morning, trying to get words out of my mouth in the proper order and, and somewhat with correct pronunciations. If you've liked whatever I've done already this, this far or over the nine, uh, the, the couple of thousand videos of the last two years, please, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And then hit uh, the, um, you know, whatever that other button is, so that you can come back and visit because we're going to have Brian Wong on later today and then Larry Goldberg, of course, visiting us in the uh, afternoon. Uh, joining Patreon, uh, we've had a very, a very, very big lull in people joining Patreon. So if you really want to support the channel, you could do that or you could buy a Cybertruck bottle opener. Goldman Sachs lowers their recession odds to just 15% now from 25%. So if Randy's been right and we've been in a recession already, then I guess the recession's over. Um, but the recession, we're going to find out, has more to it than maybe Goldman Sachs is talking about. Market Watch says construction of new U.S. homes dipped 0.5% in September as builders pulled back on new projects. Housing starts fell to 1.35 million compared to 1.36 million in August, according to the government. Um, th the data matched Wall Street. That's what they were expecting. New home construction was down 0.7% from a year ago. The overall figure was dragged down by a drop in, drop in multifamily construction. Single-family home construction grew a little bit in September. 
Um, the main thing, of course, here is that apartments are a little bit overbuilt right now. We talked about it, I think, yesterday or the day before that rents are actually the mean, the uh, median rents are actually dropping on new apartments. Uh, building permits, a sign of future construction, fell 2.9% to only a 1.43 million rate. As mortgage rates are falling substantially over the month of September, builders pumped up the uh, units they were they were doing, but then uh, those mortgage rates went back up again, and so we're seeing a drop off. Uh, the mortgage rates will probably continue down into next year, um, depending on how hot the you know, business cycle is here. If the economy is as strong as some people think it is, then maybe the Fed doesn't cut anymore. And the, and and we're not seeing um, any further reductions, by much anyway, in the bond market of yields on those 10 years, which is what determines what's happening with mortgages. Um, permits, which provide an indication of future home building, were also down. Permits applied for uh, were down 0.3% in September, Permits to build multifamily, they, those are up by 10.8. Uh, big picture, according to Market Watch, housing starts are typically a volatile data series, but the data indicates that as mortgage rates fell substantially in September's, builders pulled back on starting new apartment buildings. That makes zero sense. Why did I even read that out loud? <laughs> builders did remain optimistic about the months ahead and their ability to sell houses to home buyers. An industry survey showed on Thursday, builders still have the financial power to offer incentives to make home ownership available. We saw some stats on that the other day where the amount of incentives are about what they've been for a while. U.S. home builders are in a holding period, awaiting further rate cuts to kickstart demand, according to Sal Guatieri, senior economist at BMO. With affordability still a pressing issue in many regions, home building will likely remain stagnant. September's housing starts will have once again been adversely impacted by hurricanes. This, But if you take out the hurricane activity, there's still a moderation. Looking ahead, the outlook brightens as affordability will, might improve as, those, uh, as the uh, mortgages come down. Inc. Magazine says that the Fed agrees with moi. <laughs> Why, here's the, here is the, 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 what uh, the Inc. Magazine said, why, despite being squeezed by high prices, have America's kept spending at retail stores and restaurants at a robust, robust pace? One key reason is a relatively simple one. Wealthier consumers boosted by strong gains in income, home equity, and stock market wealth have increasingly driven the spending. The two economies that Larry and I have been talking about for months and months, that trend documented by Federal Reserve Research now represents something of a shift from pre-pandemic period. And it suggests that consumer spending, the primary driver in the U.S. economy, could help sustain healthy growth this year and next. Lower income consumers, by contrast, have been disproportionately squeezed by higher priced rent, groceries, and other necessities, leaving them less able to spend on discretionary items like electronics, entertainment, restaurant meals, and bicycles. <laughs> See how I worked that in? <laughs> Than they were before the pandemic. Though their spending is starting to rebound as inflation-adjusted income rises, it could be years before their finances fully recover. Keep that in mind. We have two economies and the rich are able to keep the economy going, apparently. Well, it's the government, health services, and tech, and the rich. Those four things apparently, maybe, have kept this economy from going into recession. I, I guess I'm just kind of looking at the average guy out there and saying they believe it's a recession because that's how... 60% of the population is seeing things. These disparities help explain the gap between gloomy consumer sentiment and widespread evidence of a healthy U.S. economy, a major dynamic in the presidential race that is now in the final weeks. Only a portion of the American population is fueling most of that growth, and that's evident in government economic data. The trends also illustrate how the economy has managed to keep expanding. That's what I just said, but that was Randy talking, and these folks are now agreeing with me. Despite the much higher borrowing costs for mortgages, auto loans, and credit cards that resulted from the Fed's um, uh, rate hikes, inflation-adjusted consumer spending rose 3% in 2022 and 25 in 2023. Yeah, did you know that 
the highest number ever in history, 45% of people that own their own home have a zero mortgage. Yeah, that's a big factor in what's going on. All right, let's take a look at where all of this has, is working its way into the stock pricing right now. Well, Tesla, which has been up 70, which has been down 70, is now down 70 um, at this exact moment. The Dow Jones is down 135 0.88. The Nasdaq is down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did it again. The Nasdaq is up 123. S&P is up 12.84. Um, in and then we've got the uh, we've got the Magnificent Seven all up. Tesla being the only one that is not up this morning out of the Magnificent Seven and and up nicely actually. Most of the Magnificent Seven. Apple's up 272. Uh, NVIDIA's up a buck 39. Meta's up 280. Yeah, so doing rather nicely. We've also got the uh, Kathy Woods all up, 100% up this morning. So I don't know why. Well, Tesla, again, it's just been like this all week. Just like this, currently down 60 cents. Percentage-wise, we have got the Dow down 0.3, the NASDAQ up 0. Uh, 0.64, and the S&P up 0. 0.22, Tesla down 0.27. Let's go ahead and look at the bonds. Okay, the bonds are down 2.7 basis points at 4.077. It was down more yesterday, so we've actually recovered a little bit of that. I'd love to. I've, I, actually, I thought, think I saw it in the pre market at 3.9 something. So it's back. It's not uh, dropping as fast as I'd like to see it drop here. Uh, if we're really going to see uh, mortgages come down, if we're really going to see housing pick up. Uh, which is the story of the day. The two-year, also down 2.6 right now. Um, uh, we've got the basis points, the three-month down five-tenths of a basis point, and the two-month, of course, it's up 3.6 basis points. And then we'll go to oil, which was falling last time I looked. Uh, we have got oil under 70 on Texas Intermediate again at 68.97. That's down a buck 70. Brent down similarly at... Uh, 72.84, natural gas down 3%, even more than the other two, at 2.27. So natural gas has been falling steadily. Apparently, either there's lots of natural gas and or the natural the folks who bet in this market are thinking that the winter is not going to be that. Now, it's not just the winter in the United States. Please understand, it's the winter in particular in Europe. Those are the two that people kind of look at. I'm sure they look worldwide, but those are the big, big consumers of natural gas. Um, gold is uh, up $24.60, uh, Has uh, is currently in the ballpark of an all-time high, $27.31. Silver up almost 3% at $32.7. I'm going to just predict, I without looking inside, you guys can check it out, but I'm pretty sure that is a recent high, and copper up 1% at 4.371. That is not a recent high. That is kind of in the middle of where it's been recently. The dollar is up against the euro, 0.26%, and down against the yen, a similar amount, 0.33. Crypto, I'm sorry, Bitcoin up 1575 at 68,444. Okay, now this is a solid run. Bitcoin is now back into what I call the higher range, between 66 and 74, it is solidly in there for the first time in weeks. Uh, and then that is the entire list, except going back to Tesla and checking once again. Oh, see, it's only down 19 cents now, about to go back into the green, being flat. <laughs> What's with Tesla all of a sudden being flat? <laughs> who, who would have ever figured? Well, sometimes when a stock is flat, it's poised to go one way or the other, right? Yes, sometimes this means, I mean, I don't know what happens if there's a miss next week. What if it's only 49 cents? What if it's 48 cents? Will that take us back down into the into a 100 handle, like 198 or 188? Maybe, you know, it's not a crazy idea. But on the other hand, what if we do hit 66? Or even seventy cents, which I think is unlikely. It's gonna. I think it's gonna come down to things like the um, uh, how much money we're getting in from those uh, those uh, 
the the the, the, the <clears throat> I'm forgetting what they call them all of a sudden. You know that those uh, money money that's traded based on the um, uh, other companies missing their numbers. Those where they have to pay those fines and they pay them to Tesla. So if those are higher than expected. Um, I think we, and I know you guys will all tell me, and then, this is just old age. That's what that was. I just can't remember the name. All right. So um, later on today, we have got Brian Wong and then we got Larry Goldberg. What a fantastic day we have ahead. And then yesterday, you didn't watch it. I don't know why. Maybe you've already seen it somewhere else, but you want to watch the uh, uh, Scott Walter talking about the robot, talking about the video that was out yesterday, because there's details there that you're going to miss unless you hear Scott Walter tell you what I didn't see and you probably didn't see either. There's the card to go back and watch Scott Walter from yesterday. All right, Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. It's time to join Patreon. That's all I got for you right now. It's been great talking to you.